Our text from the Gospel reading, John chapter 1. In Jesus' name, Amen. Last night we heard the familiar Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. The angel announced to the shepherds, Today is born to you a Savior, Christ the Lord. St. John gives us a very different perspective on what we celebrate today. He doesn't tell about Bethlehem, or the shepherds, or the angels, or the manger, but only about the one who was born. And John doesn't even begin with the birth, but with eternity. The Christ is eternal. John begins his gospel with words that remind us of the opening words of Genesis. In the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is John's title for the Christ, the eternal Son of God. As we say it in the Creed, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity. The Christ is Creator. John makes it clear that this Jesus, true God, was involved in creation with his Father and the Holy Spirit. All things came into being by him. Nothing was made was without his involvement. This Jesus is true God, the Almighty, the Creator. The Christ is life and light. John makes this contrast to the death and darkness that is in the heart of all people. Here we begin to see the purpose for Christ's coming. Verse 9, the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. In the third article of the Creed, Luther's explanation uses the word enlightens to describe the giving of faith, the renewing of our relationship with God. Darkness describes our whole world and all our individual souls in sin. In this spiritual darkness, we cannot see our way. In this spiritual darkness, we cannot recognize our wrongs and the fact that all our efforts only lead to eternal damnation. We don't recognize that. In spiritual darkness, we cannot understand our need for a Savior. John says it in verse 5, the, the light shines in the darkness, and one of the other translation puts it this way, the darkness did not comprehend it. But for this purpose the Word became flesh, to bring us from spiritual darkness into the light of God's love, to bring us from spiritual death into life to bring us from spiritual hostility toward God into being God's sons and daughters once again. Verse 12 says, As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. And John talks about the new life as a new birth in verse 13. Not a physical birth, but a spiritual birth of new life for eternity. The Christ is incarnate. The Word became flesh. Incarnate means in the flesh. Incarnation is not about a flower or a kind of milk. It's about being in the flesh. What an amazement. What a miracle. The eternal God puts himself into this temporal world. The creator of all things takes on the flesh of his creatures, those whom he created. The one who created and actually is life and light comes into this world of the darkness of sin in order to die. All this he does so that we, in the darkness of sin, may have the light of forgiveness and new life. All he does so that we, fallen creatures,
They have a new relationship with our Creator. All this He does so that we mortals, whose every step is headed toward death, may live with God in eternity. For you and me, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. For us He came and showed His glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. For you and me, the Word became flesh, born in Bethlehem. For you and me, the Word became flesh in order to die on the cross. For you and me, the Word became flesh in order to rise from the grave for you and me, the Word became flesh to bring us to salvation. For this Word become flesh, we give thanks and praise. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.